and learn the different types of careers um, that are available in kinesiology. So before we get started, I'd like to speak to a couple of housekeeping items. Um, please ensure that you keep your microphones turned off throughout the first part of the event. And most importantly, please ensure that all comments or questions are respectful to those around you and our speakers. In terms of how the event will run, our, speak our speakers will present and share their experiences in the first 20 to 30 and minutes. Join the meeting. Um, afterwards, you will be provided the opportunity to ask any general questions uh, directed to all of our speakers in the chat. We will also answer pre-submitted questions at that time. Um, following that general Q&A period, you will have the opportunity to network with our speakers in breakout rooms. Um, and so without further ado, um, I would like to uh, welcome our first speaker, Malik. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I will throw up my slide deck and I'll kind of share some of my story, what I do, um, and the fun things you can do with kinesiology. So without any further ado, All right, and let's go presenter mode. All right, ready to rock and roll. All right, so my name is Malik. I go by Malik the Kin, and for the next couple of minutes, I'll share a little bit about my story, what I've done, and my career journey. Um, I'll share some of my professional adventures as a kinesiologist, my three main roles that I've worked in in the last little bit as a kin, um, and I'll share some pro tips for you as students. And then we'll have the Q&A at the end, um, but if you have any questions, we can always ask those in those sections that we spoke about earlier. So one of my quotes that I always like to start off when I'm talking about kinesiology, because inevitably there's some point where somebody asks you what kinesiology is, and you're just like, uh, it's this thing where I do these other things. And as you're going through school, you have a lot of courses. Um, so one of my quotes I like to summarize it is no matter where you are on the continuum of health to performance, a kinesiologist can make you better, whether that's you're doing rehab, whether it be mental health, um, whether it be high performance, there's a lot of different things that you can tie in from your education that allow you to help anybody regardless where they are on that spectrum of health to performance. So kinesiology for me started very, very early. Um, before I could spell it or I knew what it was, I played a lot of sports as a kid. And one of my favorite things to do was play baseball. So this is me circa five or six years old playing baseball. And I remember one game, I was probably like 10 or 11, um, looking at a row of houses beyond where the baseball field was. And I knew my coaches told me if I practice really hard, um, you get better. And I watched like pro baseball players hit home runs. So I thought to myself, if I do everything perfectly, can I hit this ball onto those houses? Um, obviously not. I was way too small. There's no chance I could have done it. But in my mind, I was like, it's only practice and you just do a couple things. And that piqued my early curiosity for understanding the human body and how it works and practice and sports. Um, so I went to the University of Guelph Humber. Um, and it was a great time. I learned a lot of stuff. One of the cool things about it was we had a lot of hands on practical stuff as much as we did have the academic stuff. So I got to participate in a lot of things while I was there, including kin games, um, which I did three times once in Winnipeg, Montreal, and in Toronto. Um, so fun times pre-pandemic. And then when I graduated in 2017, I wrote the ARCAN and became a kinesiologist. And I started working in a rehab clinic, doing a lot of different things. And I found where my groove was, was really figuring out when people get hurt. It's very easy to point to your shoulder and say, my shoulder hurts and work on your shoulder and do things to the shoulder but getting an idea of not just that you're hurt, but how did it happen? And kind of trying to figure out the human body and figure out if this is your problem, where is it coming from? So for example, I've had one client who had shoulder pain and they were throwing and they're playing water polo and they just couldn't figure out why their shoulder was hurting no matter what they did. And when we took a bigger picture, looked at their movement patterns, realized that dysfunction is actually coming from their opposite hip. So then treating that hip and addressing where that problem comes from really helps people. And that's one of the strong things that we can do as kinesiologist. So that's kind of where I found my first footing was working in that clinic and solving those types of problems. And one of my favorite things to do is also stay involved with sports. So one of my other roles that I was was a sports therapist. Um, so if, essentially, I worked as an athletic therapist, but with my kinesiology um, background and having my emergency first responder 
And I started working in rugby, which I knew absolutely nothing about. I thought it was football without pads and a bunch of crazy stuff. Um, but I grew to fall in love with the sport. And as a sports therapist, essentially my role when I work with a team is before the game, I would do all their taping. So tape their ankles, thumbs, knees, hips, shoulders, whatever you can imagine. I would spend probably an hour plus taping all the athletes. And then when they're on the field, I would walk on the sideline as they're playing. If somebody got hurt, I would then run on the field to assess them and make sure if they're okay. If not, I would signal to the coaches that they have to come off. And then when they come off either that evening or right after I would do treatment on them to get them back to playing better. Um, so I got to travel a lot in that role. The first pitch you see on the left was me at BC Place. That was a year after I graduated. We were playing in front of 30,000 fans, which was a really wild and cool experience. Um, I went to Florida, got to work with the rugby team in Washington. So I got to travel a whole bunch back when traveling was a normal thing to do. Um, and in 2019, I went to New Zealand with the Canadian team. So I got to do a lot of unique things as a kin, but still as a kinesiologist. Um, so exploring what you can do with that registration was something that I enjoyed. And I got to do a lot of fun stuff with and see a lot of places and rack up a lot of air miles. And the third thing that I do is I am a strength coach. So I'm currently working for the Toronto Maple Leafs as a strength and conditioning intern with both the Maple Leafs and the Marlies. Um, and it's all in that same continuum of doing rehab to seeing how athletes get injured when they're on the field to training them into gym to be stronger and better so that potentially those things don't happen. Um, as a strength coach, it's a really cool spot to be because you have a lot of hands-on touch points with these athletes and you get to see the small things that they do um, that make them really unique athletes, but you also get to help them figure out where their weaknesses are so they can continue to develop um, as professional athletes. So I've been in this role for about two years. Um, it's a really cool, unique thing. And in it, one of the things I'll say is we spend a lot of time at the rink. So for example, a game that starts at 7 p.m., I'll probably be at the rink around 7 a.m. Just get started with the athletes, do their warm-ups, do their preps, help them with their nutrition, um, go through tagging different technologies and assessing the athletes and ensuring that their workloads are appropriate for them. So a lot of small things that you do in a day, but it's still a fun one nonetheless. And another part of me, um, I'm not a big New Year's resolution person, but in 2019, I said to myself, whatever ideas come to my mind, no matter how big or no matter how small, I'm going to put 100% effort into it. And at the end of the year, I'll reassess. Um, so for me, I always love fitness apparel. So I created my own fitness apparel, um, which I sold. And that was a fun time. We did photo shoots. And I also love teaching a lot. So I found that a lot of students didn't know how to study for the ARCAN. It's really tricky. And I know there's some preemptive questions about how do you become a kinesiologist, which we'll touch on that. Um, but part of the other things I do as well is I teach a prep course um, to help kin students transition from student to uh, kinesiologist. And to date, with the first line education, I think we've had over 100 students um, come through our course. So that's one of the fun things I get to do um, is teach and help you become kinesiologists. So some pro tips wrapping up before we move on to our next awesome speakers. Um, the best thing you can do is invest in yourself, whether that be doing additional courses or spending time really getting good at your craft. It's a really good and broad scope that we can do as a kin, um, but investing yourself just allows you to get a lot better at that thing. Um, another thing is go outside your industry for inspo and collaborate with people that are doing things not necessarily in healthcare. I get a lot of inspiration from the music industry um and people doing creative artsy stuff so they do things very different so it's cool to kind of take pieces of what they do and just kind of sprinkle it into how i practice as a kinesiologist one of my favorite quotes is your network is your net worth so network like crazy meet people build relationships the reason i was able to get the job with the toronto marlies is five years before i started that role i met one of the staff members and i would just send them a follow-up email once a year and ask them hey do you have any tips um and eventually they reached out to me and asked me if i'd be interested in joining the team um, believe in your value and set boundaries. One of the big things for kids is you want to make sure you get paid properly. So setting boundaries and knowing that you have a skill set that is valuable and not pay, taking a low paying job just because it's a starter job is a big piece of that. Set a do not disturb sign on your imagination. I could tell you from my 2019 adventure of just making a logo and printing a couple t-shirts that investing in yourself and letting your imagination kind of grow creates pretty unique and interesting things that you get to enjoy. And finally, show up as many spaces as you have the energy to occupy. Um, all of us are on the board of OKA, and that's just places that we can be and have some type of impact. So the more places you can be, the more interesting people you can meet. 
Um, so that is my quick summary of me. Um, thank you. Thank you for sharing, Malik. It must be rewarding to help an athlete achieve their goals and uh, through your work. Again, just a reminder that if anyone has questions, please note them down if you can ask um, all the questions after our speakers have finished. Um, now I would like to welcome our second speaker for tonight. Um, please join me in welcoming Victor. Thanks. Um, one quick housekeeping if if you're okay with it, I would like to see some faces. It's weird to like, we're doing a lot of Zoom meeting now. It's weird to not see any faces. Um, we'd love to like, instead of talking to my PowerPoints, faces would be great if you don't mind. All right, give me a second. Oops. Sorry, running into some technical problems. All right, so, um, so my name is Victor, but who the heck is this guy? Um, so I have a completely different background than Malik. Um, so originally, I actually came from China. So my family moved to Canada back in 2009. Um, I didn't, we didn't move to Toronto, but we moved to Winnipeg, so one of the coldest cities in Canada. Um, so in University of Winnipeg, we actually finished with, originally, I was going to become a psychologist. So I finished my Bachelor of Art in Psychology. However, um, I took a course in Exercise Psychology. They kind of like fell in love with the concept of becoming a performance psychologist and found out that I need an exercise science degree to, to become a performance psychologist. That's kind of how I switched my career path from psychology to exercise science. And after I finished my exercise science degree and decided it would be good, um, it would be good to just work in the field a little bit. So I got to work as a strength and conditioning coach for the University of Winnipeg, Brandon University, um, Western Hockey League, um, also some high performance, private high performance gym in uh, Manitoba. Um, so after that, I uh, decided to pursue my um, professional um, kinesiology degree uh, at, the universe, at the University of Toronto. Um, it's a little bit stereotypical for, for Asian or Chinese family that we, if we can become a doctor, we need a, at least a one graduate degree. And after that, through University of Toronto, I was fortunate to uh, able to practice in a few hospitals such as Toronto Rehab in the outpatient clinic and Scarborough Hospital with their cardiac rehab program. And after I finished my um, degree with the University of Toronto, um, I kind of started practicing at MedCan, which is a private executive clinic. And then right now I'm a clinic, di um, clinic director at uh, Lab Motors Health and Performance. Um, similar to Malik and, and others. Um, I'm also the vice president at um, Ontario Kinesiology Associations and a research and development committee, committee members with the Canadian Kinesiology Associations. So my, my background is a little bit different. I didn't, um, after I practiced a little bit in Toronto, I kind of switched my career focus a little bit uh, into a start. Um, so back in 2010, um, back in 2021, I found one tech startup called Bochum Health. And after that, I kind of got into the uh, capital investment firm, um, the Canadian Angel Investment Foundation a little bit as the entrepreneur in residence, mostly focused on fundraising for uh, startups. And last year, during the pandemic, I actually opened my own clinic, um, which is the Lab Motors Health and Performance Clinic. Um, so when I started my kinesiology, uh, kinesiology journey is actually started in University of Winnipeg. Um, first, it was as a research assistant, um, just similar to a lot of students don't know what to do. So kind of like, um, try to get involved as many opportunity as possible. Um, talk to get, um, for example, like, uh, I used to love to teach, so I kind of like, talk to my prof, see if I can become a lab assistant to help them to 
um, organize their lab um, for students and then helping out with their basketball team, soccer teams as a strength and conditioning coach. And after I graduated, I moved to some small town in Manitoba called Brandon. Um, Manitoba, I work as a strength and conditioning coach. At that gym, I was fortunate to train with a lot of the high performance athletes, um, such as Olympians, um, NHL, um, hockey players, um, university basketball players, um, and then moved to University of Toronto, um, mostly study uh, for studied kinesiology, and at the same time able to practice at their um, in-house sport medicine clinic. And then after graduated, um, like I said, I practiced as a personal trainer first and slowly chan um, transitioned into a kinesiologist and also a referral coordinator for, for the patients. And then my another title that I've kind of proud myself to have is as an entrepreneur. Um, so how I started that journey is I was recruited to be a sports scientist for a student startup back in um, University of Toronto. And through that, I kind of like, I like that entrepreneurship journey and then went on to pursue additional um, education through the York Entrepreneurship Development Institute and the Schulich Executive Education Center. Um, just try to like learn as much information about business as much as possible, similar to a lot of other um, students out there. Uh, I had no idea how to run a business, um, no idea what business is about. Um, so kind of pursue a, additional education kind of helped me to um, help with my startup idealizations. And after that, um, through Ryerson Venture Soon and the Canadian Angel Investment Foundation opportunities, I was fortunate to found a tech startup back in 2020 called Virtual Health. With Virtual Health, what we are looking at is mostly utilize artificial intelligence to assess um, human movement. Um, however, uh, because of some circumstances, uh, the startup fell, um, just kind of we broke apart. And back in last year during the pandemic, um, I decided to open a clinic called the Lab Motors Health and Performance Clinic. Um, what we do at Lab Motors Health and Performance Clinic is um, using movement to help people to switch their mindset from um, proactive healthcare to more like preventive healthcare. And with that, um, we hire like kinesiologists, intern, and physiotherapists in the clinic to, to practice. Um, let's see here. So here's the pic. Um, here's a little bit. Um, here's some pictures of that we we took. Um, this is one of the technology that we're utilizing. It's called the Panoi. So what we do is I using VO two max analysis to help individual to um, focus on their own health. Um, because one of the, our main philosophy is to um, shift people's health from treatment and rehabilitation prevention of symptoms through, through movement intelligence and state of art training educations. Um, we believe that a lot of those state of art um, training and technology shouldn't be only allowed access with certain, with limited group of people. Um, so what, what we are trying to do here is to try to popularize all those like state of art technology education to a lot of the general uh, general populations. All right, um, here are my information. So if anyone wants to keep in touch, feel free to email me and happy to chat with anyone. Right. Thank you, Victor. There are a lot of things to consider when thinking of pursuing a master's of professional kinesiology. I'm sure students listening um, in found the information you shared helpful. So next up, um, I would like to welcome Sandra. Hello, hello, thank you everybody. Can you hear me okay? Awesome, okay. Um, so I'm gonna warn you, I don't have fancy slides like Malik and Victor um, did. So mines are very simple. Uh, so bear with me as I pull them up. Um, at listening to Malik and Victor, there are um, some similarities between um, my career path sort of and um, the ones that 
Victor and, and Malik have been through, but I think it's also um, a little bit different. So I'll share my story with you. Um, and, and I think that goes for the kinesiology profession. It is uh, so wonderful and it has so many different opportunities. So um, you may find yourself a little overwhelmed listening to all of us and, and figuring out, oh my God, there's so many out opportunities. Um, my suggestion is always go with what you have a passion for. And let that be sort of the lead with the career path you take as a registered kinesiologist and then be very flexible because there's lots of opportunities. Um, so I'm going to close this box here so that you guys can see my slides. Um, my name is Sandra Atri. I'm a registered kinesiologist um, and currently I work as a health safety and wellness consultant for Allstate Insurance Group of Canada and I'll talk about uh, my journey first and how I got to work in corporate wellness or workplace wellness. Oh. Um, so I graduated in 2005 from York University. Um, for some of you, that is unimaginable because that's so long back. I remember 20, almost two years ago, going to York University in kinesiology. A lot of people had not heard about kinesiology as a program. And I would always get questions about, uh, what, do you, what do you study again? How is that? And what does that mean? What does kinesiology mean? Um, now you guys are lucky in today's world, um, kinesiology is really well recognized. Um, so that's just a, a little bit of where I come from. So graduated from York University, um, right off, you know, from um, finishing my degree, I thought that, okay, great, I'm going to start working in rehabilitation clinics. I found some um, multidisciplinary clinics where they had physiotherapy, chiropractic, massage, and they needed a kin to um, show basically the exercise rehabilitation. So I started my journey working full time. I was um, using, uh, so I was uh, monitoring the gym and providing exercise therapy um, with the guidance of the other kins that monitored the gym. And I was also working as a physiotherapy assistant. And I learned a lot. I have to admit, um, working in rehabilitation rehabilitation taught me a lot about um, the profession of kinesiology. And that's where I really gained my confidence in injury rehabilitation and prevention. Um, but, you know, to be quite truthful, the working full time in a pain management setting was really getting to me. And I thought, okay, I, I want to be, um, you know, I want to be the, the change. I want to be kinesiology is so much about prevention. So I thought working in the fitness industry would be a great place to be because people come there before they get injured and before it's too late. So um, I started uh, simultaneously at first, but then eventually I diverted entirely in the fitness profession. Um, I didn't need to be, but I became a certified personal trainer um, and then eventually be a, was able to um, become a fitness manager. I worked for um, really big names out there like uh, Good Life Fitness and um, Anytime Fitness and uh, Fitness Clubs of Canada way back when. Um, and um, when the, the actual all women's club that I forgot the name right now. Um, but that also, um, I was doing great. I was making great money, but it wasn't satisfying. Um, there were so many things I wanted to do. So then I thought, okay, you know what? I've gained enough knowledge now to be able to run my own business. So after working a few years in uh, the fitness industry, I launched my own business, um, a mobile personal training and rehabilitation services. I was getting a lot of, I think uh, a point Malik made was making networks and connections. And I think that is a really good um, takeaway. So I did have really good relationships with people that I worked with um, in rehabilitation clinics. And I just reached out to them and I said, hey, listen, I've started my own business. If you have clients that you discharge, but still require, um, you know, help, um, I'll be happy to go over their place. This was way before the pandemic. So this stuff was no brainer. So I ended up for almost a decade um, running my own business. I was very successful making great money. Um, and I eventually, just like Victor, decided to become an entrepreneur and um, just actually I'm 20. So I worked four years on 
um, that idea. And then I launched it for about a year um, in 2017, 2018. Um, and then it was live and working. It was actually a, a, a platform that offered virtual uh, personal training sessions. And this was before the pandemic. So we actually were live nine months. Um, trying to kind of really increase um, awareness around that uh, that uh, business, but um, people did not get it. They looked at me like I was from Mars. Uh, they were like, why would I want to do a virtual personal training session when I can go to a gym and do it? So um, I ran out of funds and I had to shut down in October of 2018. And guess what happened less than six months later? The pandemic hit um, in March 2019, and virtual fitness training became no brainer. And um, you know, it was it broke my heart. I worked almost five years on that. I spent a lot of money, um, but it wasn't a success. And a lot of people reached out to me, and I had the opportunity to launch the business or relaunch it. But I decided I was at a really good place um, in my career, and I didn't want to go back. So sometimes, you know, not getting what you want. Um, is actually a blessing. I also had an opportunity for about three years to teach um, as a kinesiologist um, three days a week at Bryan College in their health and fitness program. Um, and then that kind of brought me to the point of making that career change and really um, starting a new career in the corporate wellness. Um, I was making great money, but I was not happy with how things were going. I expected to make a lot more for the time I was putting in. My schedule was all over the place. I was you know, rushing to teach at college and then rushing to see clients from um, afternoon to evening. Fridays and weekends were shot with clients and work. Um, so I got to a point where I was like, okay, there must be something better. And I went on a search and I got, um, uh, I realized that there's a whole world called the corporate wellness um, or workplace wellness that exists. And um, I took up a contract and I said, you know what, it's 12 months. I'm going to give it a try. If it turns out well, that's my new career path. If it doesn't turn out well, I always have my other pathways in can. So um, I'm not sure how much you guys have heard about um, workplace wellness or, or corporate wellness, but basically every organization um, is required to have um, a health, safety, and wellness consultant of some sort. Um, there are different pathways as a kinesiologist that you can get into corporate wellness or workplace wellness. Here are some that I've listed here for you. So you can become a wellness consultant. Um, you can go into health and safety um, for the organization, or you can um, do benefits and disability management. Uh, with the knowledge that we have as kinesiologists, we can really shine, um, but it's, it doesn't go without saying that you do need to acquire a couple of other certificates. Um, most of them in health and safety are free of charge. They're, you know, they're um, government-based uh, programs that you can take to get certified, but things like benefits and, and disability management require more licensing, but the, the cost is minimal. It's not big. And you would be looking at a career in different organizations. So right now I work for an insurance company. Prior to this, I worked for Home Depot of Canada as their wellness um, consultant. And there's you know, you can work in staples. So there's so many different um, businesses that have this. And then you have opportunities to work for the government. So you would be working for the town of Richmond Hill or town of Waterloo as their health and um, wellness consultant, or even in fact, universities for their employees. Um, there's also other insurance companies that we recognize as vendors. So things like Sun Life, LifeWorks, Manulife that provide um, services to different organizations and you can work uh, for those companies as well um, to be program advisors and administers to other organizations. Um, so Sun Life, LifeWorks, Manual Life, like I said, and People Corporation. So there's also that opportunity. Um, some of the benefits that really drew me in and, uh, you know, still um, I'm in this field and I'll be happy, more than happy to discuss this more with you in the breakout sessions or if you have any more questions. Um, he's, here are the pros of working in um, corporate wellness or workplace wellness. It's a full-time salaried position. Um, so you're not worried about making ends meet. Um, it's, uh, you also do 
um, qualify if you're working full-time permanently and not on a contract. You are qualified for employee benefits and bonus every year. Um, there's opportunity to shine as a kin. So there's other people that can take this avenue. There's college programs in workplace wellness, a um, couple of years, two to three years, and they can get certified and work in this area. But I think as kinesiologists and our diverse knowledge and background, we really can shine. Um, and then there's career development. So let's say you start as a wellness consultant, but then you get really excited about health and safety and you want to do a little more. Um, there's room in that organization for you to develop or you as you know, as you learn the business and your way, then you can take some courses. And then there's the opportunity to for career change because you're full time in, a, in a, an organization, uh, there's different departments. So let's say you love kinesiology, but you also love communications and it gets to a point where you're at crossroads and you want to change your career because you're settled in an organization, there's that opportunity. Um, and I think that's all I have to share at this point. I don't want to take up all the time. Like I said, I'll be more than happy to discuss this with anyone that's interested in the breakout rooms. Um, back to you, Avery, I think it's back to you. That's incredible, thank you, Sandra. Working in corporate wellness is a very rewarding career pathway that more students need to learn about. Thank you again for sharing. So at this point, we would like to open up the floor for any general questions you have for all of our speakers. Um, we do have a couple questions to start us off that have been previously submitted. So the first question that we're gonna start off with is um, what are the best strategies uh, when studying to become a registered kinesiologist? And I think um, Malik, you would be best suited to answering that question. Yeah, I will do another screen share. Well, <clears throat> yeah, I'll do another screen share and I'll show you uh some of the best strategies and just even the starting place to figure out what is this is the exam even. All right, so what you should see right here is the exam blueprint. So this is available on the Ontario, the OK, or the COKO website. So the College of Kinesiologists of Ontario. And this is essentially a breakdown of like, what is the exam gonna test you on? What is it based on and how it's structured? So the exam is offered two times a year, once in April and once in September. Um, there's six locations that you can write it. So you can write it in Toronto, London, Ottawa, Sudbury, Thunder Bay, Windsor, and as of this year, online. So you have an online option to write it as well. And the exam is made up of 170 to 180 multiple choice questions. Some questions are just very straightforward questions, and some of them are case-based questions where they'll give you information about a case, and you have three to, question, three to five questions um, preceding that case. Now, an important part for students who are interested in becoming kinesiologists to be mindful of, the exam is broken down into five domains. So you have knowledge, uh, kinesiology, practical experience and assessment and service, professionalism and professional practice, communication and collaboration, and professional development. So the big domain that I think stands out to a lot of students is the knowledge, which is everything that you learn in school. The exam is only made up of 20 to 25% of what you learn in school. So there's a big portion of the exam that's based on the standards, the guidelines, essentially what the college exists for is to protect the public from us as kinesiologists. And they know that you know kinesiology because you graduated from a kin program. So they know that you know how to do kinesiology, but they're really gonna test you on is, do you know how to practice safely and ethically as a kinesiologist? So from a starting point, the most important thing for you to do is get an understanding of all the standards, of all the guidelines, all of them are available on the college's website. So you can take a look at that. Um, that's a quick and short answer. And if you have any other questions, feel free to ask me in the breakout room or you can, I'm sure you guys will get our contacts. You can ask or send me an email if you have other questions. Perfect, thanks so much, Malik. Um, our second question that we have here is uh, how can we get insurance or um, how can we reach out to local family doctors and let them know that they can send us a client? And um, Sandra, I think you'd be best suited to answering that one. Yeah, so your insurance, the best place to go is the Ontario Kinesiology Association. Um, they have the best insurance to um, offer you if you're thinking about liability insurance. If you're starting your business or working for someone, that would be the best place to go. Um, and I would suggest that you start with your own family doctor uh, because they know you, they trust you. They've probably known you for many years. Um, it would be a great place to just, you know, next time you go for your visit, 
um, have uh, some business cards with you and maybe a little bit of um, a bio printed out so that the doctor can just have on their desk and, um, you know, hand out to patients. Um, start with your own family doctor. I guarantee you they're going to send you so, so many referrals. Doctors that I've spoken to in the past, they're desperate for sending someone, you know, they're sending their patients to someone, they just don't know anybody. So I would say do that. Um, start with your own family doctor. Once you get comfortable, then, you know, if you go get a massage, then have a conversation with the massage therapist that you see and, and introduce yourself and, and talk about what you do. And again, leave some business cards or maybe a website if you have, leave it on there or some bio that um, they can have readily available that they can share. So start networking with the, with the professional professionals that are that you can cross reference to but that also know you maybe even on a personal level that um you know they can send you people because they know you I, I wouldn't just call somebody you know a family doctor that you don't know and they don't know you and say hey I'm a kin can I come drop off some business cards you need to have some sort of network a relationship with them um because so much of what we do is um you know, around um, liability and people trusting us with their health so that you need to have some people that know you or have been doing business with you. So they know you on a couple of levels. Perfect, thank you, Sandra. Um, so our last question uh, that was pre-submitted here um, is what is the prospect for the kinesiology field in the near future? Um, and I'll throw that question to Victor if he's okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think the prospect for the kinesiology field is unlimited, as in the healthcare system right now, there's a trend that is shifting from a um, um, rehabilitation mindset to a more like preventive um, healthcare mindset. Um, especially with kinesiology, what we are trying to do, or as a kinesiologist, we are trying to like prevent a lot of health conditions or injuries to be happening. Um, so we, I think we definitely like tapping into, we're following the trend. And at the same time is, is also up to your imaginations. Um, all of us in the OK have come from a different background. Someone come from a research field, someone from a strength and conditioning field such as Malik, or corporate wellness for Sandra, or with me, uh, somehow I got into a tech startup. Um, or even in venture capital that relate to healthcare or kinesiology, uh, is like really up to your imaginations. Um, uh, especially after COVID, I see there's a, what we're working on with the OK right now is like trying to promote us to a lot of the insurance company because we're going to be seeing a huge um, uptake in mental health claim, um, especially with how exercise can be a great alternative method than pharmaceutical interventions. Um, for mental health. Um, so a lot of insurance companies are interested in incorporating um, kinesiology um, services into their policy. Um, so there's a, uh, I'd say like the prospect for kinesiologists in the future is unlimited, uh, but it's still an uphill battle that we're fighting against compared to like physiotherapists, occupational therapists, just because we are only regulated in the province of Ontario. Um, and was is that if you get out of Canada, no one knows what kinesiology or kinesiologist is because it's only legitimized in Canada. Um, it, there's a huge opportunity, but um, but but it's going to be an uphill battle. Not going to lie to every, all the students. Um, you have to kind of re recognize that. So um, some of my classmates actually went on to work in uh, ergonomic or work as an insurance adjuster. Um, don't think about as a kinesiology student, you have to be working in the exercise or fitness field. Um, you can utilize your knowledge that you learned uh, into another um, field that able to applicable to health in healthcare as well. Perfect. Thank you, Victor. Um, I think, oh, Malik, you got that last question. Thank you for answering that. Um, yeah, if anybody else has any uh, general questions that they would like um, to share before the breakout rooms um, and networking event, um, feel free to drop them in the chat or you can raise your hand. If we don't have any more, um, we'll be starting the breakout room shortly.
Okay, I think that we um, will be entering the breakout rooms. You're going to uh, have the option to enter um, either Malik, Victor's, or Sandra's, um, and you can move uh, between them too if you have multiple questions for the presenters.